Alright, okay, alright, okay. What's up, buddies? Welcome back to another day in the pre-preparation for the launch of FIFA 23 Ultimate Team. I, I gotta say real quick, across the board on our dead, so not dead right now, everything is popping like crazy, so God bless you guys, thank you so much. On our Nick 28 Clips channel, which... Uh, we'll make sure to start putting the links to the clips channel in the description on these main videos. So if you guys wanted to see them, we're going to start putting out a heck of a lot more quick FIFA 23 content here that are going to be different than these long form squad building videos. And then when like the road to glory comes out, right? They're going to be edited videos, highly edited videos from our daily road to glory grind. So these this clips channel will give you guys almost daily clips of crazy things that happen within the epis that maybe you just don't have the 30 or 45 minutes to catch, right? So this channel, if you're a fan of the of Ultimate Team and my content, it's a newly created channel. Um, I would subscribe to this channel. So thank you to those of you guys that are. We're already all at 1,100 subs on the channel. So I greatly appreciate the support. And then of course, for anything non-FIFA Ultimate Team, thank you guys as well for the already support on the More Nick 28T channel, where like our Leeds United career mode, all the NBA 2K stuff I do with Run the Fuck Market, the F1 stuff I do with NEP, the IRL streams, going to Leeds games, watch parties for football, will all be on this channel. So I know that we're gonna jump right into these squad builders, but thank you guys so much for the overall support, man. Um, it's nice to be back excited for a FIFA Ultimate Team release. I was telling the Twitch chat on stream today that I, I mean, having quit the game so early in FIFA 22, I felt empty for a very long time from my passion, which is the combination of football in real life and mixed in with my love and obsession with FIFA Ultimate Team. So I'm really hoping that FIFA 23 brings my passion back because my passion for football mixed in with the Ultimate Team grind for our poor man Road to Glories every year is some of the most enjoyable things I do on a yearly basis. And subsequently apparently you guys seem to really enjoy it as well so um let's get into today's video it is going to be a i think awesome setup and i don't even really know what i'm going for here so a day one bundesliga Serie A hybrid that's the plan for the video today now a lot of you guys are gonna be like day one 100k what are you talking about well yes for anybody that's watching these videos, anybody that's watching me do this stuff on stream, nobody is starting their ultimate team experience with 4,000 coins and having to buy 300 coin players, right? Everybody is pre-ordering the game. If you're listening to me and you're on PC, you're gonna be starting your road to glory with like 9,000 FIFA points, right? For free, literally just from what EA give you for having a subscription to EA Pro, EA Play Pro, right? And even on console, I mean, you're gonna start with 4,600 FIFA points and you're most likely going to have all of your preseason stuff done from FIFA 22. That's going to give you packs for FIFA 23. You're going to be doing all of the SBCs, I'm sure. All of that stuff. I'm going to walk you guys through what's the best way to do them. All of that good stuff, right? We're going to talk about during our uh, Poor Man Road to Glory episodes and stuff. And then we're going to be we're going to be doing a whole, whole bunch of separated curated videos for the Clips channel, right? So these things we cover on a daily basis on stream. They'll be on the main channel. If I give you guys like what I think is going to be really good advice on what to do with your 4,600 FIFA points at the start of FIFA for your Road to Glory, it's going to kind of be lost in a Road to Glory episode. So that's why we have the Clips channel. The Clips channel will then upload the one to two minute advice of what you should do with your 4,600 points, right? So anyways, we'll get into that. The point that I wanted to make here before we got into the squad builder is for those of you guys like 100k day one squad. Yeah, if you use your 4,600 points and you sell intelligently, which is you sell every last little thing that you get, you'll easily have 100 to 150K just from the free stuff that EA is gonna give you from your pre-order of whatever copy of FIFA you get. So that's my like disclaimer on this 100K squad builder uh, Bundesliga Serie A hybrid. So having said that, let's get into the squad builders. My favorite part of the whole thing is working with the Twitch chat through what we think is going to be the best setup for this hybrid. For 100K, how are we gonna start out? I'm gonna have an end goal of still running a 4-2-3-1, right? As you guys know, for the start of FIFA, I'm gonna go with what I know as the 4-2-3-1 Ultra Tiki Taka build. That's what we're aiming for, okay? So having said that, let's start. I, I really do enjoy working from uh, the back to the front. <laughs> so in goal, let's have a look. The Bundesliga and the Serie A. What do we got? Neuer gonna be way too expensive for a day 100k uh, Road to Glory squad, right? None of them look particularly good. I mean, Bauman looks okay. Castiles looks like he would be good, but being that he's 84 rated, he's gonna be what, like 
four, five, six K. Let's say Castiles for the time being. I think he's a good option. But before I fully commit to Castiles, let's also have a look at the Serie A GKs. Okay, let's see what we... I mean, oh, Nana kind of would be good. Or personally, I think Rui Patricio would be the move. Do you really want to spend the, the three to five K of your hundred K, maybe 120 K or whatever for the squad builder on a Castiles? I don't know. I probably would go with Castiles if, uh, if push came to shove. So with full chem... With a glove chem style, look at that card, man. Who cares about his kicking? I'm not worried about his ball distribution. That's actually crazy. So he looks great. But just for the sake of arguments, right? For someone that's probably not going to be worth more than a thousand coins. And once again, if we give him that glove, because again, you shouldn't really care too, too much about his kicking, personally. Uh, 90 diving, 95 handling, 84 positioning. Pretty good. So if we run into financial issues with this squad build, we might take Castiles out and bring Pachicio in. I think he's going to be pretty great. At left back... I would love to go Alfonso Davies, man. I feel like Rom is going to be expensive. Gunter might be the move. 80 pace is still going to be fine at the start of the game. I feel like Rom might put us over the edge. So for the Bundesliga, I would say Gunter would probably be the best bet. Let's have another Gander at the Serie A LBs. I think a lot of people would say Spinazzola, but he's going to be a lot of money, man. So I would personally go with... Do you guys think Gosens... Remember, it's a 100k squad builder means we do have some money to use. Oh my god, He's, he gets a le left back and left mid as well. I actually think Gosens White might be one of the best left backs in the game, period. That's a nice card. I know a lot of you guys will say, I only has 82 pace, he's not good enough. Start of the game, we don't even know what the meta is. As, as we said yesterday, I got abused in the comments of the videos yesterday by talking. I'm not saying pace won't be important for people that get mad at me in the video saying I'm being a hypocrite by telling people that pace isn't important because I'm telling people we don't know what the game is going to be like, but then I'm telling people that pace isn't important. I'm not saying pace isn't important. I'm saying we don't know what is going to be important. So don't write players off based off their pace being low or oversell them on pace being high. Having said that, I think Castiles will be dope. Someone I desperately want to use for right back, boys. Look at this, okay? Look at this absolute god. He's going to be a fortune though, isn't he? We think in Frimpong is going to be crazy money, dudes. I do think the wide positions, no matter what is or isn't meta, wide positions, left back, wide players, left wing, right wing, wide cam, left cam, right cam, need a good bit of pace. You want to have those guys have an okay amount of pace, right? So you're always going to focus on something like that. 15 to 20k right i don't know if a right back i really you should really be spending that type of money i think Mounier could be usable i actually think he's a really nicely well-rounded card and again because of his pace he's gonna be low i don't think he's gonna be an expensive card this would probably be like an eight nine hundred coin card no problem right i love to go with a masrawi but i just think frimpong's gonna be like 15 20k i think masrawi is gonna be like 10 to 12 to 13 to 14k i just don't see these guys really working. I mean, you could fit in a Mounier, you could fit in a liner, uh, you could fill, fit in a Widmer. I think he's fine as well, especially with an anchor or a shadow if you're going to... Just, they don't really, it doesn't really work for me. So I would probably venture over to the Serie A. I think the Serie A has an abundance of good wingbacks. They, they just don't match up in the Bundesliga. I think you're going to be overspending in the Bundesliga because there's not a lot of options and the FIFA community is very predictable, right? So paste guys are just going to be expensive. Whereas if you look at the Serie A, look at this. You've got Quadrado, Di Lorenzo, Dumfries, Karsdorp, Hatabor. You, you even have Lazari. You even have Sergino Dest, if we're just talking about the pace. And then again, you have very balanced players, even in Calabria. He's another Mounier, really. Lazari, I think a lot of people will go with because they can't think for themselves and they just see 92 pace and that's a goaded card. I think he's a very one-dimensional pacey player. High-low work rates means he's going to leave you absolutely left open in defense. So I would rather give up a little bit of pace and go with someone that has a bit better overall stats. I'd say a Dumfries or a Karsdorp would be something I would really, really like going with. But I think if we're talking about a 100k hybrid, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit of bias, right? I'm half Dutch, love the Dutch players, love my Dutch national team. I love Dumfries. The guy is a baller. Like for the Netherlands, he's a, he's a baller for Inter. So do you guys think Dumfries would be viable? Part of me thinks he won't be that expensive because people are going to go for Quadrado. Or if they have money, they'll go with a Karsdorp or a Di Lorenzo even. And yes, I agree, he deserves better passing, for sure. I, I honestly think he'll be 3 to 4k max. I think Quadrado will be a solid 15 to 20k, for sure. I think that Dumfries looks absolutely cracked. Alright, let's get excited now. This is where things get crazy. So, 
Don't forget, there are more options than this. One player that I think a lot of people think is going to be cheap, but is going to be very expensive, is Emre Chan. So Emre Chan starts as a center mid, but you can he has a position, a preferred position for center back. I just think Emery Chan's going to be very expensive, and I don't know if I would want to use him day one. Zule looks like he's going to be great. Um, I mean, I'd hope someone like Hummels is going to be useful. I'd hope someone like Orban is going to be useful. So I want to kind of get in that semi-useful but not crazy pace because that's where players get expensive. I feel like Upa, Gvardiol are probably... I feel like they'll be more expensive than Hernandez, but maybe not. Theo Hernandez is such a well-rounded center back. I mean, look at this Indica card, man. Klosti, I bet you Klosti is going to be expensive too. Medium, medium work rates, high medium work rates. Maybe their work rates mean they're not that. I bet you Gvardiol is going to be very expensive. High, high work rates. I think there are a lot of options. I do, I'm very curious as to what you guys would think someone like Lacroix will be in the Bundesliga setup. Remember, we're doing a 100k squad builder, right? Would you say going up into like an Indica or... I mean, Tap Soba looks pretty interesting to me too. I feel like if you give Tap Soba an anchor, he could be lights out. We love a bit of Tap Soba on this channel, both for the Leeds career modes and for the uh, for the Ultimate Team runs. Our four man road to glory. This guy's always been in our teams. I know. I think this year it's going to be a bit different because there are so many more options. I feel like last year the Bundesliga had like two players that were viable. I think the 87 pace is going to naturally make him pretty damn expensive though, or like a Schlotterbeck. Bro, Schlotti, I think, again, because he doesn't have near 80 pace, might go under the radar. Schlotti being high, high work rates, he's got a huge boost. Wasn't he, like, 75 rated last year? So I think for those of us that are doing those 100k squads, Schlotti might be the guy that goes under the radar. I think Taps is going to be cheap, but I think Schlotti and Taps will probably both be relatively cheap. I think we go Schlotti. I think. Let's see. We'll keep it moving. Uh, let's go have a look at the Serie A. Want desperately to go for Tamori, but he's going to be expensive. Very expensive. If we're just looking at pace, there's not a lot of crazy options. Ibanez, I feel like, might be quite overpriced. Brazilian with that type of pace. Anyways, Kalulu looks good for a 78 rated. Not bad. I think we can do better than Kalulu, though, in terms of rating and overall stats. What about Mancini? 67 pace, still a bit more usable. I wonder how much someone like Bastoni would be. What do you think, guys? When, when there's going to be a Tamori, a Skriniar, and a Bremer attracting people's attention? I feel like Bastoni, even though he's 84 rated, might only be 6 or 7 or 8k. 80, the, the problem is, is 84 rating is just going to naturally make his price all immediately be 5 or 6k. Because I think this, like, this, this back line, like, I don't think it's going to be more than 3 to 5k here for Gosens. I don't think Dumfries is going to be more than 3 to 5k. That's 10k. I don't think Schlotty is going to be much more than 3 to 5k. That's, let's say, 15k at max. Castiles, I think, might be a bit expensive. But we'll ignore Castiles for now because we can put Patricio in the setup. That's not terrible. I think that's very good for a 100k squad builder so far. So let's move ourselves into... There's a lot of inter players, hey? Let's focus on a holding DM. For a DM, I don't know if I'd be wanting to spend that much money. I think for our price point, someone like a few people in the Twitch shot are pointing it out. Sal looks pretty good. I can't imagine he'd be that expensive. Well-rounded, medium-high work rates. What's uh, what's Sal's, what's Sal's height? Four-star weak foot's fantastic. He's got an alternate position for DM, so that's nice. A pretty good balance for a relatively tall player too huh see this is what concerns me though for a holding dm i don't think his defensive stats are good enough this guy is going to be doing he's basically our center back in the midfield guys don't know i don't know if he'll do enough for us there's not a lot of options is there for holding dms in the in the uh in the bundesliga so lamer is an interesting one i'm not going to go with him but i we, we can have an, a discussion about how much lamer will be let's go have a look at the Serie A, and and I, you know the Serie A is going to have a couple of good players tonali is going to be too expensive guys i feel like this tonali is going to be a lot what do you guys think i'd love to go with tonali i think he's going to be too much Serie A got a lot of really really well set up mids uh weston mckenney as a box to box man i think weston could be a bit expensive though medium low work rates you guys are telling me to use him at center back medium guys cdm is our midfield center back. We need high defensive work rates. We need pretty good defending, which he has, but medium low is essentially unusable. Darun is a great shout. Darun is actually a really good shout. I think Darun's going to be super cheap. Yeah, Darun is a great shout. But then if we're looking at Darun, I mean, Lobotka looks okay too. Weston McKenney, the high, high work rate. I feel like Weston McKenney is going to be expensive. Two things. I think the defensive work rate's still a little bit low. High, high work rates means he's going to be probably pushing up the field more than I would want him to. What would you say a Tenali is going to be nuts, right? Like we're talking 30K probably, 20, 20 to 30K. I would assume for Tenali. Tenali we can't even talk about. 
I like the idea of going for Brozo, man. I don't think he'll be that expensive. I think the only reason he'll have a, a value is his rating. Again, if you give him a shadow, you're willing to grind a little bit and then get a shadow on him. He's going to be very, very good. I feel like Lamer will be a lot, right, guys? Probably 10, 15K. I think so. Uh, okay, so box to box. Let's have a look at the Bundesliga. I don't think there's anybody in the Bundesliga I'd really be willing to use. I mean, Bellingham is a dream, but this card is going to be... I bet you this 84 Bellingham is going to be like 80k. We'll have a goal of testing this guy out within the first couple of weeks in champs, but it probably won't be right away. Kamada, maybe. Not really. There's not much in the Bundesliga, boys. I, I would love... I would love to go with a couple of players here as box-to-boxes. I think Weston McKenney is going to be very sought after as a box-to-box. -box. I think Weston McKenney, in fact, might be a bit overpriced. I think a perfect box-to-box -box mid is going to be this Pellegrini genuinely he's got amazingly well balanced stats he's got great finishing even for a, a deep lying midfielder we can we can get him in the center mid position as a box to box mid right so he'll he'll get full chem and then it all depends on on what you want to use for him Do you, i mean if you use an anchor bang this has been about eight years of doing this right 90 stamina is cracked, but what do I do for my rude hullet role players? What, what, what's like 99% of the time, what chem style do we use? You should be yelling to yourself, engine, right? I'm a very unoriginal person. I'm set in my ways. An engine for me every year as a box to box mid is the goaded formation. And Futbin seemed to agree. And I guarantee you he goes under the radar. Almost nobody will use this guy because people see him as a cam. They look at his stats. He doesn't have pace. Not interested, right? He can't be used as a DM because his defensive stats aren't great. I feel like this guy will honestly cost us no more than 6 to 7k. And he looks to be one of the better DMs in the game. He looks nuts and I didn't even notice him. You're welcome. So, midfield locked in. I don't think we're really overpriced in any way for aiming for about a 100k. I, he's not that overly exciting to me. I'd love to go with a Lamer. I just think Lamer. I don't know what Lamer's price is, but I think he'll be a bit overpriced. 88 interceptions, 87 standing tackle, 81 defensive awareness. 79 strength maybe is a bit concerning. Yo, I'm sold. We're 100% we're, we're going with a Sao Pellegrini uh, midfield. Okay, that might... Well, we'll see. We'll see how it works. So, we've got the defense. We've got the midfield set up. Now it's time to look at the wide players. So, let's have a gander at our wide cams in the 4-2-3-1 that we're planning to put together. So, we'll look at, like, left mids, left wings, and just see what we got here. What do we got? Nabri and Diaby specifically are going to be very overpriced. I think even Bellarabi might be a bit expensive just because of his... Uh, uh because of his pace baku looks good to me man he can play at right back center mid and right wing which is pretty damn versatile uh for different setups he's got high medium work rates four star three star isn't the best i would argue so he goes up to about an 82 rated cam or right wing or left wing which is where we'd use him what about a hawk what does a hawk do i mean my right cams don't get a lot of chances they're more setting up the play so i wonder even if an engine would work on a wide cam here Baku's not that great, boys. I'm not going to lie. I'm not overly sold on Baku. Mane, Koman, and Zane are all going to be crazy expensive in terms of what I feel like his stats should be. But maybe uh, maybe it's because I haven't really paid attention to Hazard or Dortmund. I don't know if he's been injured or what's the deal. Damn, the Bundesliga wide players aren't really overly attractive to me, man. Yeah, the Serie A, way better. Way, way more options in the Serie A. Chiesa is going to be the GOAT, probably 15k. Not a chance. Dude, Chiesa? This Chiesa card is going to be one of the best cards in the game. I think this Chiesa card is going to be like 30 to 40k. I might be wrong. I might be totally overpricing him because maybe he's out of people's radar. He's not. He's injured. I think he's is he even getting back to fitness yet. He hasn't really played. I still think this Chiesa is going to be so expensive, man. He's 84 rated with 91 pace, 81 shooting, 86 dribbling. Four star, four star. Nah, I think I think Rafael Leao and Chiesa are just too good. I feel like they might be just too expensive. I, I wonder, what would you guys say Leao's would be price-wise? Would I be a psycho if I wanted to get Rafael Leao at striker? How much do you think a Rafael Leao would be? 50k, 50 to 60k? Okay, so I dreams of Leao are gone, boys, for this 100k squad builder. There's no way I'm putting 50% to 70% of the team's value into Leao. Yo, Rebic low-key could be our striker. Could play left wing, left mid striker. He's an 86 rated striker, man, with a finisher. Look at this card, 95 finishing, 84 attack positioning, 91 shot power, 82 agility, 98 dribbling, 84 reactions for a striker, 6-1. I'd say the only issue he may have is his stamina is a bit low at 78 and his composure at 75 is a bit of a problem, but I think Rebic might be 
might be fit for the team. A lot of people are... Anyways, that's the striker role. We're not looking at strikers right now. We're looking at uh, wide players, right? I I want Chucky Lozano so bad. I know that his pace is... You guys are going to say I'm a fraud because I just want him for his pace. Do you guys think Chucky will be expensive? I really want to get Chucky. I'd have him at right cam. I actually think, though, Di Maria and Berardi might be a bit too expensive. I'm thinking Politano, because Politano is left-footed, right? Four-star, four-star. I don't think Politano will be very expensive. And look at his damn card, man. Left-footed, four-star, four-star. High-low work rates is perfect for the cam role that we have him in. Wide cam, left or right. I actually think 83 pace is more than enough. I'd be tempted to give him a dead eye. A dead eye makes him an 85 rated cam. I just don't think he needs the help with dribbling. His dribbling stats are really, really good. I think Deadeye's the move. I mean, if you want that little bit of a boost in pace, Engine might be the play. And, I mean, look at what Deadeye does for his overall long shooting, too. 86 long shots, 93 shot power. I I, I, I think you go Deadeye, boys. Okay, so he's going to be our left-footed attacker. All good. Uh, let me go have a look. I'd love to go Pedro. I don't know about Pedro, though. Zakani looks kind of nice. He has this going to be nuts. Yeah? Insigne? Where, where is Insigne? He's at Napoli, right? Is Insigne a cam or something? What is he? What's Insigne? Is Insigne a center forward? He must be a center forward or something, right? Oh, he's in the bloody... Oh my god, I forgot he went to the MLS. Oh my lord, I completely forgot he went to the MLS. Holy moly, that's embarrassing. Daniel Malin might be usable out wide. He only has 72 passing. That's going to be a problem. Werner's going to be too much money, guys. Werner's going to be too much money. Now, yeah, my wide cams need really good passing. I mean, honestly, we might have to go with... You know what, man? Let me go with Zakanya. Let me have a look at this guy for a second here. So if we give him a dead eye, he gets an 82 wide card, 84 rated cam. 85 acceleration, 80 sprint speed for a wide position. I know I've been harping on about, cam uh, like, don't be too concerned with pace. That might be a problem, but everything else looks really good. His dribbling looks great. I mean, 71 composure is a concern. Dulafo. Yeah, what about Dulafo? That's a good shout. Or Delafeu, however you say his name. What, what, where does he play? Can he play at left, mid, left? He looks good. Where does he, where, where, where does he play? Uh, he can only play striker. Oh, but, but that's not bad. Four star, four star, five ten. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Eighty five rated cam, eighty five rated left wing. Great shout, Twitch chat. Great shout. That's it. So this is what we'll do. Zakani is out. This is how we're gonna get it to work, boys. Rebic is going to be our striker. He can play at striker. So in-game, we'll move him up to striker. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Finisher, 86 rated striker, man. He's got good base level stats for passing. So Rebic is going to be our striker. Gerard Delafeo is going to be our wide right-footed cam. I honestly think we're actually very underpriced. Now we need our Johan Cruyff, our Wesley Schneider position, right? The creative central cam. Probably the most important position in the entire team, if I'm completely honest with you. I thought Florian Verts would be really, really good. But with, first of all, a big chunk of money to use, I think we have a big chunk of money left over. And those of you guys that are kind of paying attention to what I like in a player at Central Camp, I don't really care about pace at all. This Marco Royce has been just assaulted by EA over the years. So that's how we would do it. So my question is, why, are, why am I having these two things happen? First of all, Rebic is only on two. Sal is only on two. I need more links to Rebic. Too many different players. Oh, manager. Hold on, hold on. So if we went with a... I think I have too many different nations, guys. I think that's the issue. Look at that. There you go. Okay, I think we got to go. Patricio was our second choice. I think we got to do that. And look at that. Everybody's on cam. So does Brozo and Patricio look good, guys? Or would it be better to go with something like this? Um... Would it be better to just go with some... What looks better? Sommer and Sal or Brozo and Patricio? What What would you guys say looks better? Could also go with Cobell. I don't think he's very good though, is he? Cobell looks all right. What's Cobell's height? You need like 6'2", six, 6'... Six. Oh my god, Cobell's 6'5"? All right, there you go. There's the move. There is, in my opinion, our 100k day one Serie A Bundesliga hybrid. This team, honestly, is arguably well under 100k. I would argue this team's no more than 70 to 80k. So, I mean, we could get Lozano in the team if we wanted to. I think no problem. Honestly, I think we could maybe even get... Chiesa, uh, Chiesa might be a stretch. Chiesa might be a stretch. 
Would Tanali push up? I think Tanali is going to be dumb expensive though, guys. But I would say this takes us a lot closer to 100k. I think I think Tanali is going to be in the 20k. I think Royce is probably. What do you guys think? I think Royce because of the pace. I know he's 85 rated and it's Marco Royce, but he's going to be such a good cam. And I still think even with his name, even 85 rated, he'll be no more than 10, 15k. He's such a cracked card, man. If you look at this Marco Royce as a central cam. This guy is going to be nuts. I would personally give him... I would ignore the, the pace issues. Um, and, and I would give him something along the lines of a Deadeye. Or I would give him a... Maybe a finisher if you wanted. Um, Deadeye for me is the move. Like he's an 89 rated cam with a Deadeye. Right? If you're worried about his pace not being ideal. You could get, you know give him an engine. It gives him a little bit of help. This is your Wesley Schneider. I mean, I, I like to me, it's it, it doesn't have to have five and six for players. I'm pretty happy with the setup. I mean, you, you could easily slot in a few a few more players here and there if you wanted to. Again, if people disagree that Tonali is going to be expensive, you could throw in a Lamer and then you have to make a few adjustments to get Lamer on chem. I think Lamer and Tonali will both be not cheap, but very affordable in our, our squad build. There's not really many Bundesliga wingbacks. I mean, you could just do that if you wanted to, right? Move him to right back. Give him a backbone. Probably have to go with a Bundesliga setup or something, right? You make some adjustments here and there. But I really, really like that setup. You just make a few adjustments here and there. You might have to get someone that fits a little bit better with Delefeu. What about that? I mean, if we want to have a little bit more Bundesliga influence, I think that works. Dulafo, we should be able to get on, on Chem. Dulafo and Dumfries, we've got to get on Chem. Three people off of Chem, two people off Chem here. Okay, I think that is actually... I just did that as an example, and I think that's actually the, the best setup ever. Oh, De La Feo's off. That's close, though. No! Who dropped now? No, Indica the match! Okay, okay, wait, 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 I can't! This is this is actually irritating me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, 33 out of 33. There we go. I think we're still in the 100k range. Maybe Klosterman might shift us over the 100k. I don't think Vardiol would work for Chem. There it is. 33 for 33. Everyone on full Chem. Delefeu and Politano as our wide cams in 4-2-3-1. Marco Royce as our Wesley Schneider. Cruyff Roll central cam. Uh, Rebic as our striker who looks incredible with a finisher. Tonali and Pellegrini, amazing combo. I think Pellegrini, uh, Tonali might be a bit expensive, if I'm completely honest. I actually think that the only player, realistically, that might be expensive in this team is Tonali and maybe Klosterman. This is easily 100k. Honest to God, this is easily 100k. Now that I look at it, the only player that might be a bit overpriced for the rating is Tonali. And even then, Tonali will be like 15, 20k max. Klosterman, 10, 15k max. Everyone else, super well-priced. This is easily a 100k squad. Bro, I'm actually so impressed that we put this together. So can I show you guys? This is what it is on full chem. Just for the end of the epi, maybe even for the thumbnail for Armalika. I know he hides some of the players for the thumbnail, but let's just show you guys where everybody will play. So probably one of the best squads I've seen from anybody in my community so far. For 100k? That's a day one squad. Easy peasy. I love you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. We'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.